guys, it's me, Holly Madison. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am continuing my commentary on Girls Next Door. We are now on season two, episode five, and this is San Diego or Bust. This is where we go to Kendra's hometown. And this episode, I'm kind of cringing because it has a scene that made me cringe back then and still makes me cringe now. And I remember back then when we screened this episode at the mansion, I was just so embarrassed about this scene. And it wasn't because of anything I did. It was because of something Hef did. And it was so cringe. So if you want to find out what it is, please hit the like and subscribe button. And let's get going with the episode. Oh, this is when I make Kendra the San Diego because it sounds like San Diego and it's like an ego with like cinnamon and sugar on it. And I'm wearing a terry cloth Lily Pulitzer pink and green dress, which I loved. I still have it. Um, oh, JD, I love seeing the butlers again. That's fun for me to see everybody because I haven't seen them in so long and it's nice to see old friends. Um, this was the second hometown visit episode of the series. We visited Bridget's hometown, Lodi, in the first season and we wouldn't visit my hometown I think until like season four and I also didn't have family nearby so along with the fact that I was aloof and not really you know wanting to open up that much on camera just the fact that my family wasn't close and nothing nothing about me was convenient I feel like the first couple seasons I'm really like doing the least in this show but Let's see what happens. Let's see what I forgot about on our way to San Diego. I remember we took a really cute train. We were like in a really cute caboose car. Overall, this trip was really great. Like Kendra's mom and her grandma were really great hostesses and we had a lot of fun. Ew, you guys, anytime there's like a comment on the age difference, it grosses me out so bad. Like Kendra has like a vintage charger shirt on and he, she's like, it's the Chargers logo from the 70s. And he goes, Hef is there and he goes, before you were born. That's so great. I'm just creeped, creeped. Kendra's mom is talking about how she's not really a hostess, but they did a really great job hosting us. It was a really cute lunch. They had like all the foods that Hef liked. They did a good job. And Kendra's grandma was the funniest person. She was so delightful. And I love how what she's wearing, is just like a pants and a sweater, but it almost, just cause I'm like watching this, keeping the early 2000s in mind, it reminds me of like a juicy tracksuit. It's not, but that's what it reminds me of. And like the first thing I think is, oh, how cute. Kendra's grandma's wearing a juicy tracksuit. I think this might be a short video today because a lot like Kendra's birthday episode in the first season, this is gonna be like all about her. So I just don't have that much to say about it. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I just don't like this I wasn't in this episode as much and I just don't have as much to say about it so we're on this really cute caboose they put like a playboy bunny logo over the back of it and it had like all this good food it was super cute a very luxurious way to go to San Diego and we're standing on the back of the train having fun like hanging our heads off the edge and letting the wind blow in our face like dogs hanging their head out of the car Oh, Kendra's mom got KFC fried chicken, which I think is supposed to be a joke. Like, oh, I don't cook, so let's have her get KFC because Hef loves fried chicken. But KFC tastes good. I'm not complaining about anybody serving me KFC. I don't think that's funny. I, I think it's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for some KFC and boiled eggs. I'm looking at this food and I'm thinking it looks good. So of course, when we're doing this trip, it's very reminiscent of the trips you've seen of like us going to Vegas and us going to Lodi where we have to leave kind of early, not too early because Hef wouldn't have wanted to get up. We had to get up fairly early and do this because it was something he would only want to do in one day. He didn't like spending the night anywhere but the mansion. So we had to get all the way down to San Diego and all the way back in one day. It's interesting because rarely, but sometimes I'll get comments on these videos like, you shouldn't just be so negative. You should talk about the positive stuff too. But I do talk about stuff when it was positive or say when I liked things. It's just that when you're saying that you like something or when you're saying that something is good, that's all you have to say about it. Like, oh, I really love this or, oh, this person was so nice or, oh, this person did this and it was great. And that's kind of all you have to say to get the point across. But when you're talking about something negative, especially if it's something negative that was hidden beneath the surface, you have to explain about it and explain how that made you feel and explain why that sucked and explain why it was hidden and why it wasn't presented that way. So it's just like the negative stuff gets more space and also it's what people notice and remember more, but people are like, and again, like I've only seen like one or two comments like this, but people are like, oh, you should talk about more of the positive stuff. It's like, and first, and, 
And it would also kind of be pointless because Girls Next Door was portraying the whole Playboy world as being very positive. So that's already there at face value and that's already what you're seeing. Um, I'm here to tell you about what you're not seeing. And yeah, so I don't ever want people to think that there weren't some things about the experience I liked. I wouldn't have been there as long as I was if there wasn't some kind of positive side to it. But I just think that doesn't sink in necessarily when people are watching these videos because I tend to go over it pretty quickly. And also it's just not as memorable as when I say something that's like tea or negative, you know what I mean? But overall, I had a lot of fun on this trip. I thought Kendra's mom and her grandma were great hostesses. I love taking a train ride. Like everything about it was good, but we are gonna see one scene that makes me cringe and I'll tell you why. Oh my God, so I'm inside doing my flashcards because I was studying French at the time and it shows me like looking out the window at Kendra and Bridget and I'm just kind of like, but like I'm not dissing them. I'm not like making a face at them, but they cut it to make it look like I, you know what I mean? Like my resting bitch face gets so much play in this TV show because they always want to make it look like I'm just the bitch who's dogging everybody all the time. But like, I don't care if Bridget and Kendra are out there like flashing people on the end of the caboose. Like I was out there having fun too at one point. Like just because I'm quiet and like to study and like to get shit done doesn't mean I'm hating on people who are having fun. And I felt like they always tried to make it look like I was which is annoying. I feel like viewers definitely felt closer to Kendra and Bridget because earlier on in the series, you got to like meet their families and like hear about their childhoods and their life stories. And for me, it's like you didn't hear anything about it. So nobody thought I was like relatable or a normal person. They're just like, who's this plastic surgery girl? I think I might title this video, I finally have something positive to say just because <laughs> I don't think some people, I think most of you do, I think most of you, guys hear me and get me and like understand what I'm saying but there's definitely like a few commenters who are like you never say anything positive you always say negative things but overall other than the one like cringe scene that's coming up like this whole trip was fun this episode was fun to do like not bad about it I had a good time so we're getting in a big limo and in the background you can hear like the weird fake rap music they used to <laughs> use under Kendra's scenes that she hated Bridget's in her, I don't know if you can see, I don't think you can, I think you can just see, she's in her Cinderella, her Cinderella outfit, her blue puffy sleeves and her bun with the headband. <laughs> okay, this scene is so awkward and I honestly, like the first two times I've seen this because these episodes I'm watching for the first time in like 15 years. The first time I saw these episodes were, one, we would screen it at the mansion like before a movie night, before it aired on E! And two, I would watch it a second time to do the commentary for DVD, which would usually be like within a year of it airing. And I'm just noticing so much more now that I didn't notice back then. And there's a scene where Kendra's grandpa is there and it shows Kendra's grandpa and Hep shaking hands. And I didn't even think of this at the time, but they're obviously honing in on that to show that like Kendra's grandpa and Hep look like they're the same age. Oh no, never mind. They comment on it like Kendra's mom talks about it. I don't know. I think I'm just like, I see it now and I'm so far removed from it. I just see that scene of them shaking hands and I'm like, ah, it's so weird. Okay. So this scene coming up, Hef asks to see like home movies of Kendra when she's a kid. And then he like comments on like how cute she is and that he's going to steal the tape. And it just comes off as like the worst, like grossest, dirty old man. And I remember just hating this scene and being so embarrassed because you know, after I got into that relationship, like things, I would notice things about him that seemed even like creepier. Like, yeah, you look at the situation, you're like, okay, here's this old man dating much younger women, but I would notice even creepier stuff sometimes about him. I've mentioned that in commentary videos before. And when it would come up or I would get like a hint of it, I would just be like, go away, go away. Like, don't be, don't be real, don't be real. Cause it was just so gross to me. And this was kind of one of those things. And I remember just being so embarrassed when we screened this in front of everybody at the mansion. I was just like, is this really the guy I'm with? So gross. In fact, I feel like I wanna like fast forward through this scene because that's how uncomfortable it makes me, but I'm gonna make myself watch it so I can give an accurate reaction. Yeah, the scene is so creepy. He's like stealing the home videos. It's so like pervy. Okay, the scene wasn't as painful to watch as I remember it because it went by really fast. But I just remember being so embarrassed 
when this episode first came out, I was just like, I am with a real creep. Oh my God, the food Kendra's mom has set out, it looks so good right now. There's like ham sandwiches. It's like, she did a good job. For some reason in my interviews, I'm like thought it was really important to like smile really big and talk at the same time. Like I'm in a pageant or something <laughs> and I look psycho. Oh my God, I forgot this was in this episode. We go to Old Town San Diego, which is really cute. And we go to the Whaley House, which is one of the most haunted houses, if not the most haunted house in the US. So here we go. Wait, they don't show the Whaley House on here. So we went into the Whaley House and they have a woman working there who was dressed all in black, like period costume, 19th century, with like a veil over her head. And you go in to look at one of the rooms and she's sitting at a table and you think she's a statue. And then she jumps up and I was so scared. But they don't show it. That was like one of the best parts of the trip. Kendra's mom's saying, if Hef would increase the age of his girlfriends, I'd be up there in a heartbeat. And you can't ever really trust anything anyone says in these sit down interviews on the show because you have a producer sitting across from you who is telling you what to say. Like either they'll ask you a question and you're supposed to answer honestly. And if they like it, they'll take it. If not, they'll ask you more questions to try and get the answer they want. Or sometimes they'll just flat out give you bites to repeat. So I don't know if that's true or not, but if you had to ask my humble opinion, like, I don't know, I'm not up in her head, but I will. I think maybe she was telling the truth. Like she had a lot of like rose colored glasses when it comes to half, but I can't blame her. Like I did too for a long time. A lot of people do. Takeaways from that episode. The worst thing I think I've already said, it's my least favorite scene. It's like half being creepy and like taking the videotape of Kendra as a very small child. It just comes off completely creepy and completely wrong. It always felt like that to me. I was always super embarrassed of that scene, like embarrassment by association. Um, my favorite part is just that it was a really fun day and Kendra's mom and her grandma made us feel really welcome and they did a really good job and I had fun that day and it was fun stuff. So um, I will see you guys back for the next episode. It's where we do a slumber party for the Playmate of the Year. So I will see you then. Bye.